Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Lady Australasia Power. I'm your host, Hazel Harrington, the founder of Harrington Publications Worldwide and the editor-in-chief of the magazines I Am Woman Global and Woman Politico. Both magazines will be available in October and November. And if you'd like to feature in these amazing magazines, go to our website, HarringtonPublications.com or email us at info at HarringtonPublications.com. We're so excited to be beginning our second session as we discuss women, politics, decision-making and peace building. We believe that women deserve a position at the negotiating table. Why? Because peace is important for sustainable development. And during our second session today, we have an amazing panel of change makers, history makers, and barrier breakers. And we're going to be assisted today by my co-host, um, an amazing man, and who's empowered thousands of women to become economically independent and self-sufficient. And that is Mr. Vijay Kamar Stravastava. Vijay, good morning. Good morning, all. Good morning. Honorable um, ladies. It is a pleasure to have you joining us today and you will be uh, co-hosting this event with me today. On our panel today, I'd like to also introduce three powerful women that are shaping the world, impacting, nation, impacting nations. And they said yes to the core when I reached out to them. And that is the power of unity when it comes to women. We rise we rise when we uplift one another. And so thank you so much today to Tony Lantis who's joining us today. Tony, good morning. Good morning, Hazel. Thank you so much. I'm just delighted to be here today. Um, it's an amazing conference and just a wonderful uh, start to the week. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure, Tony, you and I have been friends and we support each other, not only lip service, but even financially, she sends me clients, she pays for my services, and we speak on each other's platforms. And that's what we're talking about. That's how women empower each other. And I salute you, Tony, you're an amazing woman. Thank you. All the way from Australia, let's give a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Okay, next we have an amazing woman and I have a pleasure of knowing this woman. Uh, she's so powerful uh, all the way from uh, the United Kingdom as well. And let me spotlight her right now. She's been hidden from us, the amazing, amazing Satnam Duker. Good morning. Good morning, Hazel. Good morning. It's finally good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we've been we've been in contact for such a long time, and this is the first time we meet face to face. So I'm very looking forward to this. So thank you for organizing such a beautiful summit. You know what I mean? And meeting people. I've been hearing their stories. I'm all come on. Uh, this time in the morning, and it's so refreshing. Come on, I mean, I was listening to Shelley, listening to Helen. Oh my goodness! I mean, look at that! Look at that! This is the only way you learn. You you, you say right? You say that the only way you grow is by lifting others, right? The only way you rise is by lifting others. This is the real demonstration, isn't it? We are learning from each other. We're learning from our experiences. We're gaining. We're sharing. We're learning. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you. And and that's and that's the reality of it is that women need to empower each other from different cultures. I've been sharing this, you know, from from years ago, ten years ago, that you know it's important for women from different cultures to come together. We brainstorm because let me tell you, when it comes to culture, there's some good parts of culture, but then there's some bad parts. Let me tell you about the bad parts. Is when uh, young girls have been mutilated. Those are the bad parts of culture, and we say no. And so we need the women from the developed countries to come in and say, Hazel, this is happening in your country. It's not happening. And uh, as you're saying that, I'm so excited to announce that as soon as um, things settle with COVID, we're going to be going to different countries, um, a, a team of us and empowering women on global platforms. And uh, the women right here, you are the change we want to see, you know. So thank you so much for saying yes, Dijka. Thank you so much. And our last panelist today, 
uh, let me put her on the screen, an amazing woman as well, um, who's uh, shaping nations and, you know, an, 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 an advocate for the empowerment of women. And, and, you know, I cannot even express how she's empowered women. Uh, we have the amazing uh, Ella Staniak. She's supposed to be in the third session, but we, uh, Ridge has been delayed, so she's replaced her spot. And uh, Ella's been uh, on, 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 on hold for a while. <laughs> you know, Ella, good morning. Good morning, Hazel. Good morning, beautiful women and men around the world. Once again, I am beyond privileged and excited to be a part of this discussion today. I cannot wait to get started. Excellent. It's a pleasure having you here today. Okay, so I'd like to just share more about our co-host, the amazing advocate for the empowerment of women, Vijay Kumar Srivasta. Vijay is a globally acclaimed humanitarian, development and social sector professional with his MPhil in sociology from Jawaharlal University in India. His two Adamic strides of doctorate are from JNU in Employee Relations and also from Management Development Institute. He is the founder of the International Academy of Entrepreneurship and Employability. Vijay, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good morning, ladies. Uh, good morning, uh, all the attendees. And thanks a lot, Hazel Harrington, for the opportunity, the most difficult opportunity given to me, very first time in my life, to uh, interact with honorable ladies and that to power women from around the world. Thanks a lot. Uh, may I please start with a small introduction of uh, uh, Ms. Tony Lontis, who happens to be a media scholar, media professional, who has been helping people to be all around the world. Tony, I would really appreciate if you can please give us a brief introduction about yourself and let us know who are you and how are you going to help our women folk from all around the world to take them to the next level of their life? Please, Tony. Thank you so much, Vijay. It's a real pleasure and delight to be here today. And equally um, to be invited to speak by Hazel was a wonderful opportunity. Um, just a quick little intro about me. Um, I come from 35 years of nursing. Uh, had worked across governments and managed statewide health projects and had my own consulting company. And in the background of that was um, a traumatic childhood and a level of dysfunction and trauma. And as I healed from that, I sat and wrote a book in 2019. And what that has led to is a worldwide broadcasting practice platform under the banner of Radio Tony and Tony TV. And my aim is to tell the empowering stories, particularly of women, and to raise their voices and talk about their businesses across the world. And I do that via live shows that are converted to podcasts and then videos that are uploaded on a US networks um, across the world. So that's me in a nutshell. And my favorite thing to do is talk about women, empowering women, and how we get to equality across the world. Thanks, VJ. Thanks a lot, Joni. It's lovely to have you here with us. And uh, of course, now we'll switch from Joni to Dr. Satnam Duchakar, who happens to be a very, very dear friend of mine. Thanks a lot, Dr. Satnam Duchakar, for being with us and joining us in this lovely event. Can you please give us briefly uh, uh, an introduction about yourself and let us know uh, how are you going to help us to help our women folk to be at the next level of their lives in the world, please? Dr. Duchakul. I'll just give a, sec a second. She's uh, been logged out by mistake. Not sure that happened. Just admitting okay. her back Should in. Go? She's back in. Just be, she's back in. Thank 
it's a very difficult task to handle a media professional, a media entrepreneur, Johnny, a businesswoman, Dr. Sattar Duchakar, and Aris, who happens to be a legal professional. It's a very difficult task given to me by Hazel, but thanks a lot, Hazel, for the opportunity. So Dr. Sussam Duchakar, can you please give a brief introduction about yourself and thanks a lot for being with us today this, in this event. And please let us know about yourself, ma'am, please. Hi, my apologies. I think I still losing the network so much. So. Sorry no about that. But yeah, I'm back again. Yeah, I'm back again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm Dr. Satnam De Chaka from London. Currently, I think during COVID, I moved to UAE and I started a new base here. It's been a couple of months, nine months, but I've been very fortunate. UAE, like I said, the, specifically what we're talking about today, we, we don't even use this terminology here because of our highness, you know, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. This land has been very fortunate. Women are empowered. Women are given the rights. Women are in politics, you see. All the important places, they're the right ticks. So this has been a very fortunate time for me, a very, uh, you know, uh, something I, look, I was looking forward to a while. But once I got into the process, into the, you know, I, can't, I got myself registered here as a company. And then I started functioning from here. That was the time I actually learned about how the changes were, what women were, uh, you know, what kind of help was available to women, what kind of support was available to women. So being in the process of the journey makes you, you know, makes you credit for that, makes you a witness to the credit. So like I said, this terminology we don't use in, in the UAE. We don't say we are here to empower women because the women here are very empowered. They are like coaches, mentors, you know, they are the best of the best. But exactly what we are trying to do here is work in a lot of different sectors, whether they are SMEs, whether they are education, whether they are health, whether it is working with the chambers, being the vice president for the International Council of Chambers. I've got a huge opportunity to meet like-minded people and learn from them. The journey at the moment is all about learning. The key to success is learn, because you learn every day, every minute. You're never at a point where you feel you've done it all and there's no room to change, there is no room to grow. No, you, you expand, you grow by learning. So here, exactly, I was fortunate to attend a lot of seminars, sessions, forums, where I met some politicians, some women politicians. And I was very blessed to share space with Vice President of Liberia, Dr. Joan Howard, only a couple of weeks ago. Then we had the Miss Kenya Commonwealth, who was running for the election. Then we had another uh, lovely lady who's running for election in, in uh, Vice Presidency for uh, America. So what I'm saying is seeing all these women, the only time you learn is when you learn from the real life experiences. And I was fortunate to experience time with them, share those memories, you know, share those moments with them and learn what their challenges were, what their weaknesses, what they found and how they were trying to empower and how they were trying to come out of that. And every time I found that women were thrown back and the only time they came out was when they put that power, that will together to come and overcome. Do you know what I mean? So it's not about where women can be placed. It's about where we think we can place ourselves. It's so important Beautiful. because people will always show you your way, but you need to know where you stand and you need to know your potential and you need to determine that day and day out. So no one can tell you anything. You're the only best friend you have. You're the only guide and mentor you have. You take from what you need to take and you drop what you don't. So it's so important, like I said, you know, this me factor is not about the ego factor. This me factor is about lifting yourself because if you don't lift yourself, you will not be in a position to lift anyone else. So that is where the priority is in whether it was covered, whether it was before, whether it was discrimination, whether it was no education to women and women. Even in, like I said, when I spoke to Miss Commonwealth Kenyan, she was running a presidency and she's classified obviously with a position as a pageant, a beauty model. But then when she spoke 
it was so clear with her indication that, look, I do not want to be, uh, you know, looked at as just a beauty face. I want to be known for the potential I have, for the acumen I have, for the talent I have, for, and for what energy I can bring in, for changes I can bring in. And she herself demonstrated that the part of the world she came in, out of Kenya, people still treat women as, you know, uh, for the wedding, they, they still, you know, they, they're still very not aware of bringing women to those spheres. They treat women just as a means of dowry, as means of uh, just, so it's like a human capital, you know, they do not give any value to women. So coming out of those spheres and still trying to put a mark of your own in the world, standing for presidency, she was coming here, she was trying to advocate women's rights in her part of the world. So this is what I mean. So real women, real life, real experiences, and trying to do something about it. So yes, like I said, you know, women can do anything. If they, for me, every woman is a politician. <laughs> We're running a household. Running a household is like running a country, isn't it? You're looking at the budget, you're looking at the finance, you're trying to make peace between the family members. So every role that a politician would make that would be in, in benefit of the country, looking after the country, exactly all the roles, the women that they, they exhibit while running a family. So women, I feel, are born politicians. So they're every day they're making rules, isn't it? They're making rules, they're living by them, they're making uh, budgets. So that's what I'm saying. So women are born leaders, women are born uh, politicians, anything. There is no, no uh, scope of what we cannot achieve if we believe that we can. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Dr. Dechakur, for such an explosive you know, school of thought you are belonging to, and I'm, I'm sure you are going to be driving this complete, uh, you know, aspiration, aspirational women of today's world. And of course, we look forward and look up to you to be always there with us as a role model for the women folk, as well as for men folk like us who are trying our level best to empower women through entrepreneurship and by making them more and more employable. Thank you, Dr. Satam Deshantar. Over to Aris, Ms. Aris Hamada. And of course, uh, Ms. Aris Hamada happens to be a lawyer and she seems to be the real eye opener for the women folk from around the world. And she can be instrumental in helping all of us to understand how legal aspect of a woman's life is going to be playing role in terms of lifting her from one level to the next level. Ms. Aris Hamada, I would really appreciate if you can please speak about yourself, introduce yourself and enlighten us with your thoughts in terms of women in politics, decision-making and peace building on this earth. Thank you. Ms. Aris Hamada, please. Hi, good morning. How are you? Very good, Aris. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this uh, opportunity, Hazel. And I feel proud to be here with all of you. And I'm sorry because uh, I'm late in, uh, in Kuwait. We are 4 a.m. And it was a little uh, difficult to, to be in uh, the, 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 the shisma, to be in. Uh, okay, I will start now my speech. Okay, go ahead. You look beautiful, by the way, Arij. Ah, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Arij Hamada. I'm a lawyer uh, from Kuwait, and uh, it's really a great uh, uh, to be here with you. And I, I think, uh, because we already have a small um, time, so I, be, I become indirectly. Um, Gender equality and the political empowerment of women are key elements for the consolidation of sustainable 
democracies worldwide. Uh, women should be equal with men in, in deciding for a better future for all. Uh, under representation, and uh, I just I will tell you something, uh, sorry because my English not very well, huh? but I'm trying to do uh, my best. You are uh, doing a great job. You're doing a great job. We appreciate you. you being here. Carry on. Thank you, okay, thank you so much. Uh, under rep representation of women in politics, government, and parliament continue while empowerment uh, process show an unsustainable women's leadership and political uh, participation are limited at both. Uh, in international and local levels, starting in political part, uh, parties and leading the position uh, in ele ele elected office. Uh, women and girls represent 50% of the world population, yet are often ex uh, execu excluded from the uh, political uh, arena and shut out of this decision-making that directly uh, affects their lives. So, um, and uh, now I will uh, talk uh, about Kuwait experience. On 16, and in the, in the beginning, I would, I would like to say that I really feel proud because we are supporting uh, from uh, the Kuwaiti men. Uh, and this is very, very important uh, to like our society, you know, in the Middle East and Arabian Gulf, it's so difficult, but now there is a big change uh, for the women uh, political in, in Arabian Gulf, uh, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, uh, Emirates, all of them. In Kuwait, we are uh, the first who, uh, who uh, to, for the women uh, in the beginning. On 16th May 2005, a law was enacted allowing women to cast votes and to seek nomination in the public elections for the parliament. After four years, in May 2009, and 16 May 2009, and in this date exactly, I was born my, my, my boy, uh, four female candidates Members managed uh, members uh, managed to size parliament seat, a total number of fifty seats in the public election, uh, and it was a history date that uh, first for for first for women become in the parliament. Uh, since in the sorry, yeah, please go on, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Uh, since, in the, uh, since the introduction of women's suffrage in 2005, the number of women elected to parliament has been very small and none were elected in the 2020 election, leading to an uh, all-male parliament today. Uh, the fact that doesn't mean that women don't part participate, participate in, politic, in politics. Uh, a record number of women ran as parliamentary uh, contestants in the most recent election. Increasing numbers of women hold unle un unelected positions in the government, uh, activists uh, activists for women legal for women's legal and political and socio-economic rights and women's participation in unions and political association should also considered as political participation in the informal uh, from curriculum. However, the fact that not many women have been elected to parliament doesn't mean that efforts to increase women political participation have failed and not made uh, any impact. On the country, the, uh, these developments have changed the, the discover around, the, around women's political and public rules. The new uh, demonization add to the, to the uh, traditionally men-only 
institution, institution of Diwania. Diwania, it's a place uh, just for the men, but uh, it's an, a place unique to Kuwait where people get together, uh, pre present views, broker deals, promote uh, competence, and discuss politics. Uh, are uh, in direct in di indicators of thing of this. Uh, for instance, female candidates and votes are now have access to the Diwania, at least during election uh, periods. And uh, there is many women now. They have Diwania, which is uh, a very good. Uh, also, women's suffrage has led to a change in the gendered. Uh, structures of the whole election process. Male candidates and uh, politication, politici politication now not only take women um, uh, more seriously, but also talk about women's issue, about uh, uh, and what interested them. Uh, still, male uh, politi uh, pol politicians now set up election tents for men, for women, and establish women women's committee. Uh, even regulars, con candidates have in in uh, incorporated women uh, women's issue into their agenda because women are voting for them. Perfect. And uh, yeah, it's, I I finished the five minutes. Oh, please go on, please go on. We will, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we can give you uh, one minute, a reach to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I thought, uh, no, I thought, yeah, I have many, but it's okay. Uh, I thought that the women to be in Kuwait uh, in the parliament member, they should know, ha they should work harder, they should have their vision. And uh, I, to, to, to let the people and the society trust of them, because um, I'm against that should the government uh, support women to be in the parliament, because maybe they will support a, a, a bad woman or uh, she don't have, she, 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 they will not deserve because they have just, uh, you know, uh, just because they are with, uh, friends with the government, so they can have seats. That's why I against uh, this idea. We should uh, give the the we should let the women work harder, like the men, to become in the member of the parliament. Thank you very much, and sorry for late. Absolutely mind blowing, uh, Arij. Uh, your perspective towards uh, women emancipation, women empowerment, and gender equality seems to be absolutely mind-blowing. God bless you, and God bless the women folk. And of course, we always look up to you to have you with us all around the world to help women folk to do much better than where they are today. Over to Tony. Tony, uh, my sincere apology are to uh, fellow panelists, Dr. Saslam Dushakar and Ares, uh, we're just trying to set the note. So Tony, uh, I would really appreciate if you can please uh, speak about uh, women in uh, uh, empowerment in terms of political uh, politics, in terms of decision-making process, in terms of peace building. And last but not least, there is a question which is where I'm going to leave it for the panelists, August panelists, to discuss about further post Tony's discussion, is that is it correct that wherever there is conflict, women must be a part of that solution? If so, why? So over to Tony. Tony, I would really appreciate if you can please enlighten us with your thoughts in terms of uh, women in politics, politics, decision making, and peace building. Tony. Please. BJ, thank you so much. Um, I'm conscious of time and I don't want to cause Hazel's session to run over time, but just quickly, I'm 
uh, we very much need to have women at the table in talking about conflict and in roles within peacekeeping because essentially um, women are part of or need to be part of that peace building process they are the central caretakers in the family and um, when they're included in the peace building uh, process it enables them to act as peacekeepers and mediators and bring their feminine uh, responsibilities and their feminine intuition into that whole process. Um, recently, I read from the UN that there's a growing body of research that suggests that standard peace and security processes um, are involving women are, are routinely overlooked as a critical strategy and that women being involved in these processes reduce conflict and advance the stability of the peacekeeping process. This evidence indicates that women's participation in conflict prevention and resolution advances security interest. So in, um, I'm conscious of the time, so I just wanted to say that women need to be included in the conversations at the highest levels across the world. We need to balance those conversations with women, qualified women, understanding women, and have them at the table. So if I take just a quick uh, example of Afghanistan, I'm absolutely sure that in that instance, had women been involved in that decision making, then the women and children of Afghanistan would have had a powerful process in which to participate and be safe and safely removed from the country. Thank you so much, Hazel and VJ. I'll keep it short. I know that the next session is ready. Thanks, VJ. Thank you, Tony. Thanks a lot. Dr. Dilchakar, over to you. If you can please let us know about your opinion on a conflict resolution by women intervention in any one of the decisions which we take it in our day-to-day -day life. Dr. Dilchakar, quickly, if you can please briefly talk about this. Yeah, and if I could just interject, yeah, sorry, if I could just interject here, if we can keep the last um, answers to one minute, we need to start Absolutely. the third session. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Absolutely, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Uh, truly speaking, Tony, I agree with you. If the situation was in hand, you know, we wouldn't be facing such terror. And knowing the situation, it's really devastating that being, you know, leaders, every we classify ourselves as someone change makers. We've not had that power yet. We've not had the power to actually execute any kind of you know, help. So this is really sad, really sad. And I wish that there was something that could have been done. But yes, hopefully, hopefully, you know, awareness, awareness will bring about the change. So thank you. Beautiful. So, you know, just to wrap up this complete session, starting from Dr. Inget and Light Link, Tone to start this complete event right in the morning. I would like to thank uh, to Hazel and to the August panelists, Ms. Tony, Dr. Saplam Dushakar, and Aris to be there with us. Thanks a lot, all the panelists, August panelists, and thank you, Hazel, for uh, giving me this opportunity to co host these three power women to uh, know more about women empowerment, women em emancipation, what we call here, or gender equality. And I look forward for uh, lots and lots of other opportunities to join hands together, to work towards women, to bring them in politics, to bring them more and more into decision making, and of course, in the peace building process, because eventually at the end of the day, I'm also one of the committed brand ambassadors of sustainable development goals, we have to make this world a better place to live in and to love it. Thank you, Hazel. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Satnam. Thank you, Aries. And thank you, Tony, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vijay. And thank you to everybody that has uh, been participating in this uh, fantastic um, event. We want to empower the future generation and we are now going to head off to our third session. And uh, this will be co-hosted by Spash Gaj. 
So um, I will leave uh, the session on just for two minutes so that you can have a look in the chat section on the Zoom link uh, and the password. Please join us and support uh, the others that have spoken as well already. And, uh, and for those that are yet to speak, thank you so much.